for the sake of people who are coming for the first time, since April or thereabout, I started handling on the Tendency Series. The Tendency Series is the topic or the topic that I started treating on. And basically speaking, when you talk about tendencies, tendencies means chances, chances, propensity, proneness, the likelihood, all right? The tendency of a dog biting you is high, two of us. The tendency of a snake eating chicken is high. So when a snake eats chicken, will you be surprised? When a lion kills human being, will you be surprised? No, because these are their tendencies. So we started examining personalities from April up until now. Trying to know the tendencies of the personalities that we get involved with in relationships. Because most times, we don't check out people's tendencies. We check out what they have. The first thing you see from a man or a woman is his or her endowment. Physically or financially. It's clear. It's glaring. When I appear, you already know that a handsome man has appeared. True or false? All right. Keep that on the side. It's subject to argument. Now, when I appear, you know that a tall man has appeared. So when a girl appears, what we see is depending on the goggle that you are wearing. Because every man is wearing a goggle. Every man is wearing a spectacle. So you see from your spectacle. My own spectacle, when I see a lady, I'm looking for that tall I shouldn't finish it. But you know what I mean. Okay, so another person appears in the same way and looks at a lady that you look at as being beautiful and turn his, and you're asking him, did you see that girl? Say, which girl? Because the lady was slim. The guy didn't see her. Suddenly, the guy is telling you, was it that one, that, 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 that fat one? And you're saying, no, was there any fat girl? Reason, you are wearing a different goggle. He's wearing a different goggle. So you see from your perspective. So what I'm saying is that when you see a lady, what we see is how endowed the lady is depending on how you see a lady. So, but what you don't know is the lady's temperament, her upbringing. Because I, I wrote it down here. I said... It's easy to identify what we like. But the problem we have is, our, is in our ability to pay for the cost of what we like. And then I painted a picture. I gave an example. Many of us in this house likes a G-Wagon. If you don't like a G wagon, you like GLK because some of us don't even know what G wagon is. You have like GLK. If you don't like a GLK, you like a Rolls Royce. True or false? If you don't like a Rolls Royce, you like um, Range Rover Vogue. You like Range Rover Autobiography. 2022 edition. We like it. Everyone like it. We would have loved to come to church this evening with a car. Two of us. Why you did not come to church with a car is because the last time you checked your account, you couldn't pay the price, isn't it? So most times when we see a lady or see a guy, you like his biceps, triceps, every sept. But what you don't know is that there is a price to the bicep and tricep. It's called his temperament. It's called his upbringing. It's called his nature. It's called his nurture. How a man is raised and how a woman is raised does not remove her endowment. He may be or she may be raised as a rascal. But if you see her on the street, she looks so pretty. 
God can endow you or nature can endow you because of biological mistake. Your father is handsome. Your mother beautiful. They will produce a very beautiful nonsense. You keep dating a guy, losing the guy, dating a guy, losing the guy, dating a guy, losing the guy because you don't have the culture to keep a guy. Number one, you don't know yourself. Number two, some have known themselves but have refused to master themselves. So that's exactly what we're teaching on relationship. Getting to know who you are, getting to know who your partner is or intended or intending partner is. So when a guy shows up and you like everything about him, pause a little and take your time and check a little about him. What do we check? What temperament is he? How was he raised? What are his values? Because when the guy's personality and temperament traits begins to manifest, you will get tired of his biceps. When the lady's madness begins to manifest, you will hate her shape. I cancel. So I have seen men and women that have come to me in the office and told me, Pastor, I have not touched, my husband hasn't touched me in the last one year. And you look at the, man, the woman, very pretty. The, the question is, why is this woman no longer attracted to this man? There is some things that sustain attraction in a man. There are things that sustain attraction in a woman. The woman, the man is handsome. The man is very nice in your eyes. But every night the man stretches the hand to touch the wife. The wife is feeling like Python is crawling on her body. She can't feel nothing. If she everly accept that man that night, it's more or less do what you can and leave me alone. Reason, there is more to marriage and relationship than her shape, than his pocket. Some have married pocket and has been pocketed for years. The guy drives a GLK and has a spider in the house. The first day you visited, he told you that, uh, I don't use this spider anymore. I use this GLK. I'm just hoping that when just I married, once I married, my wife should be using it. <laughs> and you lead, you're already like this. And you look at the spider. Eh, hey, babe, do you mean that if I study it now, you start? So why not? If you want us to go out with it, we can go out with this one. But okay, let me see. It just press, palm, thumb press. And then vroom, 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 vroom. And then you're like, hmm, baby, now, wow, why did you now? Okay. Anyway, don't worry, sir. And then in your mind, ah, if I don't enter here, if I, <laughs> if I don't enter here. But what you don't know is, how was this guy raised? What is his temperament? Can I cope with it? Because these are the things that is called price. Price tag on the guy. The handsomeness has a price. The biceps a price. The beauty of the girl a price. Some of you will go and marry a very beautiful lady. Make sure you borrow money to make sure no man enters, chances you. Now that you have married the lady, you know you are naturally jealous. So you can't let her walk alone. Uh, baby, please, you are not going anywhere. I'm going with you. I'm going with you. What is remaining is for you to resign your own job and work her as a job. Baby, we're going. I'm following you. And the lady is already feeling irritated. The value for you is dropping. It's not your fault. It's your temperament. It's your upbringing. Some of you are like that with your husband. Who knows what he's doing now? Why don't you pray to have the gift of uh, prophecy? So you can see what he's doing now. So these are the things that we need to consider in relationship. 
First, get to know who you are. Second, get to know who he is. And then check if you have the capacity to handle him. Some married pastors are not ready for pastors. You know, I like pastors. If any pastor, you just know that <laughs> pastors are here, pastors are here, pastors. There are wahala with pastor. Wahala is surrounding pastor the way Boko Haram is surrounding Nigeria. I want to marry a white. I want to marry a white. You know the way I behave. I can't cope with a black man. I want to marry a white. You don't know there are categories of white. India is white. China is white. Arab is white. Real white is white. No study about any of those whites. Anything that the pigmentation of the body has is properly burnt. The third skin is out. White. You marry. And then two years after you divorce. And come back home. So today I will be dealing on. I have dealt with. The tendencies of marrying. A sanguine. Last Wednesday I dealt with the tendencies of marrying. A melancholy. And then today I'm going to deal with. The tendencies of marrying. A choleric. We have also introduced the four major temperaments before, about three, four weeks ago. I introduced the four major temperaments. I told us that every man or we have four temperaments in the world amongst the living, amongst men, that you must at least have two. You must at least have two of these temperaments. We have four temperaments. We have the sanguine, we have the choleric, we have the phlegmatic, we have the uh, melancholy. And then you must have two. But most times, we usually have it 70-30, 80-20, 50-50, depending on your own um, configuration. We have people who are melancholy 80%, and then choleric, 20%. Some are 15% choleric, 50% melancholy. Some are 50% phlegmatic, and 50% sanguine. Which is very rare anyway. That side is very rare. You can't be this and be that. That is very rare too. All right. So today, we are talking about choleric. One of the tendencies of choleric is that the cholerics, 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 I have plenty of, cholerics are dry people. Natural choleric, not the one. I'm not talking about his or her mix. Naturally, cholerics are dry. They are not the kind of people you can engage. You know, eh, hey, baby, eh, um, eh, um, that your gist is boring. Cholerics are dry. So when you marry a man who is a choleric, you weak, your interaction level with him will be very low. Very, very low. The next thing, cholerics are hot. They are hot. If I'm talking about hot, I am talking about hot temper. Cholerics have, have their wire or fuse caught very fast. A choleric woman, her fuse cuts very fast. A choleric man, her fuse, fuse cuts very fast. So they easily get angry. At every slight thing, boom. He's angry. And you're wondering, haven't you dated a guy that you guys will be smiling and, you know, dancing and enjoying yourself? Suddenly you do or say something and he's the other way. And you're wondering, hey, baby, <laughs> is it this thing I did? Or there's another thing. Is that thing you did? Nothing else. That's what her temperament is. And then let me tell you this. I have also said that temperament will not in any way take the place of the Holy Ghost. And the essence of this thing is that when you know what you have, you will be start checking what you need to augment what you already have. Praise God. I have my legs, but they are not enough. That's why I have a car. But two of them are agents of mobility. Anywhere the car gets to, my leg can get to, isn't it? The variation is what? Time. 
My car will get to Lagos in seven hours. My leg will get there in seven days. Eh? Oh, it's not possible, sir. Maybe in 14 days. And I may be admitted twice. Do you get what I mean? So, when you know that you are choleric, you will now see the need of Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit becomes a need. I am not saying specifically for cholerics. I'm saying specifically for all the temperaments. Every All the temperaments, we all need the Holy Ghost. To augment the weakness of your temperament. Because I've told you that the earth itself, earth itself means time. Time means limitation. Means imperfection. It means that there is nothing on that time that is perfect. And all the things that God created, he created it for his pleasure. That's why no one is better than another. You can't be a choleric and you say you're better than the sanguine. You can't be a sanguine and say, you're, no, no, no. Master your strength and ask God for help in your weak areas. And then I told us before that when you get a lion like they do in the Middle, uh, Middle East now, Middle East now, they buy cheetah, lion, leopard as pets in their house. You have a guy with four lions in his house. The same lion, if you meet in the jungle, will devour you in split seconds. Somebody was able to tame the lion and live with the lion in the house. Has the lion in that house stopped being lion? No. What the guy did is that he probably engaged people who have learned how to deal with the temperament of lion to a point that the lion will begin to stay with an enemy and the enemy becomes a friend. That's what the study of temperaments is all about. Know the propensities, the weakness of your guy, know the strength of your guy, and learn to be with him to the point that people will be wondering, haven't you met a man and you're, you're pitying the wife already? You met a man, and the way the man behaved, you say, oh, I pity your wife. I pity your wife. And then sometimes you follow the man home and notice that the wife and the man is hands in glove. And you're wondering, how is this woman living with this man? Because the woman has taken out time to study the man and is living peacefully with the man. It's just like taming a lion. If you can tame a lion, a cheetah, a leopard, why can't you study to tame your husband or your wife? I don't like, I will divorce him. I will divorce her. It's not an excuse. You can tame. Reason is just, we don't give ourselves the benefit of doubt and the privilege of knowing that this person that I am dating have weakness. When we see people, we see them in their perfection and perfect stage. We don't give them room for their weakness. So when a person is manifesting weakness, immediately you will start withdrawing from the person. Which is very wrong. So what we are teaching is that when you start that relationship and see the weaknesses of the man or the woman and know that you can't cope because Middle East people are taming lion doesn't mean I should tame lion. I can't risk it. Praise God. Bros, I can't risk it. If I visit that guy in Dubai and see the lion in his house, I, I won't come down from that car. No matter what you tell me, don't worry, it doesn't bite. Don't worry, it doesn't. you're wasting your time. I can't go. I have two dogs in my house. That's the one I can pay price for. The guy can pay price for a lion. I can pay price to stay with a dog. He can pay price to stay with a lion. So is, so is it with our wives and our husbands. If you see the husband, you can't pay his price. Leave him alone. Somebody that will pay the price will appear. If you see the lady, you can't pay her price. Leave her alone. And I have told you that most times what happens is that whenever you encounter a man or a woman, they will show you their best. 
on a reflect. Every man and every woman is, 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 is in, instinctively endowed to market themselves. That's why your husband married you. That's why your wife married you. Because the very first day you met the lady, you called, come on, you're such an angel. And she smiled. Somebody called me an angel. I have never seen a man call me an angel. Yeah, this one called me an angel. That's amazing. I, I like him already. And the next day, you look for another beautiful name and call her. The next day, you look for another beautiful name and call her. What you are doing is that you are marketing yourself. You are showing your best. And you know what the lady will be doing before you? This is a lady that fights in the street. But before, once you start telling her those things, she will start blushing. All her fight instinct will start going down. She will start showing you her own best because she needs you. But a time comes in marriage, when you will get married, that you cannot call her an angel consistently. It is not deceit. It's just that the game has changed. Rehearsal and pure performance are not the same. You guys, we are rehearsing. You have finally come to the stage. In rehearsal, if you don't sing the way you are asked to sing, they say repeat it. But if you're performing live, nobody has the time to say repeat it. If you make the mistake, they say, can you imagine what that stupid girl is singing? So dating is rehearsal. Marriage is the real performance. So there are things that you can be forgiven in rehearsal, but you can't forgive in marriage. But this man, anything I do when we're dating, he forgives. Anything I do, he does In fact, before even I commit the offense, he has already forgiven me. My dear, when you get to marriage, that aspect of him will drop a little. As you marry him, he will drop a little. Reason is that what you now need to bring in is understanding. Through wisdom, a house is built. By understanding, a house is extra. Establishment comes by understanding. If you're going to be established in the marriage, you need understanding. What is understanding? Oh, yeah, the tribe was understanding as staying under. If you're not under, you won't understand. To stand under is to understand. But if you want to stand at par, there won't be understanding. So again, cholerics are very ambitious people. If you marry them as husband, they are very ambitious. Very ambitious. And ambition is very good. There is nothing wrong with ambition. The next, cholerics are very, br are very brave people. Brave people. Do I have choleric wives? Your wife, you're married to a choleric man. I need you. Any choleric wife in the house. You are not a choleric, but you're married to a choleric husband. Good. They are very brave. Very brave. You're telling your husband about the particular thing. Say, leave that in, leave that in. Leave that in. Very brave people. Cholerics are brave. The next, cholerics are very proud people. Madam, true? Okay. Very proud people. They can be very proud. They are this set of men that are women also that are full of themselves. They are full of themselves. It doesn't matter how much that is in his pocket. An average choleric man, you'll be wondering what he has. As a matter of fact, after the meeting, he'll tell you, uh, bros, do you have 1K there? <laughs> and he will be asking you for 1K with authority. You have one K there. In fact, if he said, do you have? He's a very, very cautious person. He said, please give me one K there. As if he gave you money to keep for you. That's the way they are. Cholerics are also vindictives. Cholerics, they, have, they can be very vindictive. 
very vindictive. So, so when you marry them as a wife, as a husband, <laughs> my dear, <laughs> they are the children and descendants of Moses. Teeth for tat. Except the one that the Holy Ghost has intertwined with. Any man that hasn't married Holy Ghost should not marry you. Because when the voice of the pastor will stop speaking, the voice of Holy Ghost will continue. So that's why they say, I want to marry a God-fearing man. Most women don't even know the meaning of God-fearing man. What they think about God-fearing man is a man that comes to church. Uh, which church do you go to? I'm a winner. Ooh, okay, <laughs> praise God. Because I don't want to marry any man that doesn't know God. Though. So being a winner now makes you know God. And then the next time you're telling the girl, um, her, the sister, uh, as a pastor, uh, did you check the guy out? Say, pastor, hmm, the guy is a winner. So he's a winner. Is he in the department a winner? Yes, he's in Chantuari. Chantuari. <laughs> in Chantuari. And then the girl, the guy is actually in Chantuari. <laughs> and then that makes the guy a Christian. I've told you that the test of Christianity or the test of the man's belief is when there is heat in his life. Who he resorts to shows you where his heart is. Where a man's treasure is, there his heart will be. When trouble comes to a man, you will know where his heart is. And that's why Job was an honorable man. When the trouble was so much, of course, Job suffered that trouble that was looking like um, um, what, what, um, 100 years trouble. is for nine months. Trouble of Job was nine months. But within nine months, it was back to back, back to back, back to back. Friends came. And the friends that came, Job's three friends that came, is not your friends, so. These guys flew in from their states, came to visit Job. Go and read well and see how they came. They are big boys. It's just like Janke, they had a problem. And Bigate came to visit. Mark Zuckerberg came to visit. So they came together. And immediately they started suggesting to do Job the wrong things, maybe, maybe not, what you should do and everything. The wife had already told Job, cause God and just work now. What is there? Let me inherit this mountain that is remaining. You want to sit upon this last one million naira and die. Job said, Far it be from me that I will receive the good part of him and not receive the bad part. I cannot do that. He was in it. I will wait until my change comes. So when the thing hits your husband, Sickness, poverty, unemployment, and your husband starts suggesting to you, babe, uh, that your uncle that you say is um, a kind of native doctor, can you just call him and ask him about it? It's not like we're going to see him, but just call him and ask him. Let's hear his opinion. That's where he has heart is. Uncle Mike, my husband is actually going through hello. You are telling him, you know, you are consulting him. And he would do something and call you back. I said, tell your husband to relax that um, it will be well. And your husband thought, babe, I told you. I know the Lord in whom I serve. I know the Lord in whom I serve. Why didn't you know God before the consultation? Why do you need a second opinion to authenticate your God? Why? So, cholerics back again. Cholerics are vindictive. Cholerics are violent people. Not all. They can be violent. I told you, all the temperaments, what strengthens or weakens a temperament is the nurture, the upbringing of the guy. You can be a choleric. Me, I can be a choleric. And a Dankote's son can be a choleric. Our cholerics will have different shades. Because at best, when I get angry, at best, I will shout screen, threaten. But then with this son, being a choleric, when he gets angry, what will he do? He has access to gun. Two of us. 
Because he can use gun and nobody will question it. One, so he can pick a gun and kill you. One, nobody will question him owning a gun. And they know if he kills you, the money for the family will cover it. Two, he can as well get angry and get to the car park and enter into one of the Ferraris in the compound. Lamborghini. And zoom off. And go on the way and jam the tree and die there. Cholerics with various kinds of family upbringing, toning it in different way. Choleric in Akweburu. Get angry as a choleric. It will, it will beat you blue, black. Are you, are you seeing how upbringing colors cholerics? Choleric woman from Akweburu, you marry into your house. Choleric woman from Dankote's family, you have married. Get angry. Oh my God. Oh my God. I can't take this anymore. It's not back in her back. I'm leaving this house. From Dankote's family. Choleric from Akweburu. Oduke. <laughs> will tear your shirt. You wouldn't know she's wearing a bomb shot jean. Before you know she's the one that will tear and say, Come out. What's the difference between the two? They are both cholerics, but they are colored by family values and upbringing. But when a choleric knows God, <sighs> swallows. Holy Spirit, help me. Help me, Holy Spirit. Thank you. Thank you. That's what he will keep or she will keep saying. So that's why whatever you are, you need the Holy Spirit. The next, they are irritable people. Can I digress a little? If you check very well, I have a case in point here. Madam, stand up. You volunteered, isn't it? Because I want to say this and then I'll ask. What temperament are you? What's the mix? Eh? Flag. Cholerics are mostly attracted to flags. Most cholerics marry flags. Cholerics are heavily attracted to flags. You know why? Cholerics are very egocentric authoritative. So, they don't want anybody that will challenge the authority. So, they tend to move towards somebody who cannot in any way challenge them. So, flags match a lot with cholerics. The man is, the man is let's die here. The wife is, is that how you want it? Can you see that? It's a flag with a melancholy mix. God is an amazing God. What if God has given that man choleric woman? Of course, you can't beat your husband, but you go, you go see. You go see. Because one of the worst things you would do in life is to think that you will win a woman. Eh? <laughs> you will never win a woman in a warfare. An Igbo adage says that na we would na 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 di na Do you get that? We we'll take it that way. I'll put it another way because I can give you ten other just for one. Now, Igbo people says that Onye You understand that? So, if you're a man and you are you are a mean person and you have a wife and you think you can win your wife, as long as you're keeping your wife down, you must stay down with your wife to make sure your wife is down. That's what would have happened. There. Sit down, please. Made the note to know you. 
That's the way it is. So, no matter who you are, try as much as you can to master your partner. God made it in such a way that this will attract this. This will attract that. That will attract the other. So, but most times we don't check. What we do is to just walk into marriage. Once that Mercedes uh, C-class stops, no more. No more. Your destiny will stop. Ladies, stop cheapening yourself. Whether you are in church or outside the church, stop cheapening yourself. Once a car matches break, it... were you expecting a car? Did you order Uber? And you find out that the guy, the, 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 the lady that the guy is actually stopping for doesn't get to do that. It's the people who has done it that will now call her. Mm-hmm. And I say, Amaka is you. The Amaka will say be resisting. Me for what? Do I know him? Meanwhile, people were doing me, me, and then she, he comes in front of Amaka and say, Amaka say, yes, what can I do for you? Kai. Ladies, stop, stop cheating yourself. You guys are too beautiful to indulge in some things. Cholerics are very, very logical, analytical, practical, straightforward. Logical, analytical, Practical and straightforward. That's one heavy advantage about cholerics. They are straight. If a choleric says A, it's A. If he says B, it's B. The same way you like him for saying A for A and B for B. It's the same way he says no and his no is no. If he says yes, he says is yes. He'll just say it and he, he won't discuss it. You know, I like my husband because my husband is so sincere. My husband is so, he says, also like him that when he says no, it's no. Cholerics don't know how to lie. It's not in their nature. You see, flex and male. Eh? Flex and male. They can use your sense on you. Eh? They can be crafty. But you see, cholerics, they will tell it to you and don't care how we f- how you feel. A male and a flag want to break, break up with you. They will just paint it, paint it, paint it, paint it until the paint vanishes. A choleric tells you, be angry. I'm not sure I can continue with this thing. I can't cope with your character. And he, he just continues his life. A flag can't do that. A male can't do that. I told you, I, I told you a story. How I returned to a relationship I was into before. <laughs> I had given up on the relationship. I knew I wasn't going to marry the girl. I knew. I knew I made up my mind that I won't marry her. And then the day I came to announce that I won't, I, well, I'm tired of the dating and we're not, uh, everybody should go. <laughs> I, I came to her house, sat down, gisted with her, and then started explaining to her why I, we should part ways. After explaining everything, I was able to convince her. She understood. And then I was happily going home. So I climbed down stairs, and then I was walking. I was now walking, and then I was hearing somebody behind me sobbing. You know that kind of cry? When somebody don't die, you cry for one week and you can't cry again. And just, <laughs> that kind of cry. <laughs> I turn back again. Hey, why? What is it? I, I, one year more. <laughs> I stayed one year more in that relationship. Male. Males are very considerate. Flex are very considerate. They don't want to hurt you. They must look for a way to navigate through the heart. One year I was into just, but a choleric would have, Oh, my dear, don't cry because this cry cannot help. 
I've made up my mind. That's choleric. I've made up my mind. This guy can't help. Just clear your eyes. They are, they are straight. They are straight. Praise God. Now, let me go to show you the other part of cholerics. They are natural leaders. Cholerics are natural leaders. Natural leaders. They are organizers. Natural leaders, organizers, and they are competitive in nature. If you want to get a choleric, tell a choleric you cannot get this thing. Challenge a choleric. Once you challenge a choleric, <laughs> you're in trouble. A choleric, if you have a choleric as a child, challenge the child. If you give me nine A's, I'll do this for you. That's the way they like. It's within 24-7. You will see that they are go-getters. They are go-getters. They are organizers. They are hard-working people. And another thing they know how to do is that they know how to delegate. When they lead, they know how to delegate. Delegate. They'll delegate a lot. Okay? And then they are self-confident people. You see a choleric? Self-confident people. They are very self-confident. Very self-confident. It is respective of where they fall short or not. Hardworking. And they are tough-minded. 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 Another thing is that they are restless people. Cholerics are very restless. Because they are work, work, work kind of people. So they are restless. They can be ref restless. They are tough. They are egocentric. I've said all that. Now, what is the solution, Pastor? What do we do? What do I do when I marry a choleric person? Number one thing to do. Accept him the way he is. You can't change him. You didn't make him. It's only a producer that has the capacity to withdraw a product and work on it and return it. So when you marry a choleric as a wife, as a woman... Try to understand who they are. Don't try to change them. Most problem in marriages is trying to change your husband or trying to change your wife. Don't change them. You cannot. You will keep, if before you met your wife, your wife married you at 26 or married you at 30. For a whole 30 years, he understood the family, the father and the mother. They didn't change her. Now you married her in 30. You guys are five years in marriage. You want to, you want her to use the five years to obtain 30 years. It's not possible now. You can't change her. Just learn to live with a choleric man the way he is. Uh, but pastor, that is bondage now. That is bondage now. The day you gain independence, let me know. Learn to understand. If you have a dog, don't you learn to stay with them like dogs? If you have a cat, don't you learn to stay with cat like cat? Why is it that when we come for human being, we give them, we give them high benchmark and expecting to, them to do wonders? It's not possible. Because we look alike doesn't mean we are alike. We are different entities. I'm not you, you're not me. If you know the strength of family and um, family values and family culture in a person, the impact that a woman, there's a woman I know, and one family, if I use my family again, you say, Oh, this one family you have. In one family, the woman is is the woman can't stay for one month without visiting a native doctor. If the woman fall, she will go and ask native doctor. If the daughter has headache, she will ask native doctor. Why you're taking the paradox? She's asking native doctor. That's how she was in the family. You know what? She gave birth to five, about five girls or four girls. 
Five girls. She gave birth to five girls. Amongst the five girls, the first daughter married a man who is almost a native doctor. That can't do without native doctor. The second one doesn't go to native doctor, but cannot also drink water until she acts as a prophet. So you see the upgrade. <laughs> I'm not going to a native doctor, but to do my joints. <laughs> What's the difference? There's no difference. There's no difference. We walk with God by faith. If I have to ask God or one prophet somewhere before I come to this church this evening, I won't be here. I say, prophet, should I go to church? He say, pastor, wait, let me pray. Maybe in the process of praying, his battery will run down. He, I will call him. I won't get him again. I will assume he said I shouldn't come. I will stay home. The day one pastor, so-called prophet, told me how he was manipulating a man. I pitied some of you that visit all this Habalist and prophet uniform. He said, any day I don't want the man to go out, I'll call him and tell him, don't go out. Six days. So I say that most times when I want to collect money from him. I will see danger that doesn't exist. Give him six days to stay at home. Tell him I would undertake the prayer on his behalf. And then he will send money for the prayer. I don't know how many of you that are under this manipulation. You have the one you have given pictures to. The pictures you have sent to, you have sent to those native doctors. You know them. It's plenty. He prayed for Mike to marry you. Mike didn't marry you. He prayed for this person to marry. Didn't marry. And you are still taking another picture there. His God hasn't answered him for four times. Are you not under manipulation? Praise God. Alright. First of all, accept his weakness. Second... Maintain a sense of obedience around a choleric. Choleric cannot tread his ego for nothing. We are men and men are egocentric generally, but cholerics are the headquarter of egocentrism. Any other temperament can play down on it, but cholerics cannot play down on it. You dare not challenge your cholerics. You must maintain a sense of obedience. Support and submit to him. See things the way he sees things. Cooperate with him quickly. Always allow him to take credit. Choleris likes to take credit. Even when you have done it, give them the credit. That's how to live with them. You have finished. And you have gotten it. And you come back and say, babe, do you know I, I came out with 2-1? Kai, babe, I, I'm happy I married you. If not for you. Hmm? If not for you. Was he reading for you? <laughs> is he your lecturer? But that's how to stay with them. Once you say that, <laughs> when are you starting your PhD? When are you starting your PhD? I'll make sure, I'll make sure you <laughs> Okay. Choleris are people of I. I. I is their word. Why? They trust so much in themselves. Praise God. Understand that he has a natural flair for leadership. So follow him. They are natural leaders. Follow him. Another thing cholerics do is that they hate people who are lazy. If you marry a choleric, be up and doing. Cholerics hate women around them that are idle. Not even a man will be around a choleric and be idle. If you're idle, it irritates him. So if your husband is a choleric, I hope you're doing something. Eh? Uh -huh. Better be doing, you know. 
They, they can't stay with an idle hand. So make sure you engage yourself. Let me tell you, I have done a little bit of research on all the things I've taught you, but I will personally feel that you as an individual, if you know the guy that is hanging around you now or your husband and his temperament, go above me. Go and study it more. If you study your husband's temperament very well, your wife's temperament very well, people will be wondering how you guys are living together. But if you want to enter with this uh, flimsiness of impressive lifestyle, that no, you know, uh, uh, when uh, I married you, uh, you asked me, have you eaten? Have you eaten? Every morning, have you eaten? Afternoon, have you eaten? The man is asking you because you are living far from him. When you come into his house, he expects you to be in the kitchen and be cooking that food. So asking you whether you have eaten becomes optional. Are you getting me? You were taking me out every day, every day, every day. You are married now. There is a fast food in your house. The kitchen fast food. So he expects you to enter the kitchen and come out. So when he withdraws from taking you out as often as he used to, don't say that he has dropped his love. No, it's just that the dimension of love has changed. Is somebody getting me? Because I keep hearing that. My husband was like this when we were dating. And now he's no longer that. that he, has, he doesn't hate you. My wife is like this when we are dating. Before I call, my wife has already come. She's already in the house. There's no coming again. So there are things she cannot also do again. You don't give me time anymore. You don't give me time anymore. The man has to walk so you guys can eat. Baby, you don't pay attention to me again. As a man, you don't pay attention to me. He has more people to, she has more people to pay attention to. There is a baby in the other way and there is you this way. So he, she's also trying to manage the time between you and the baby. So these are things you need to understand about your partner. When you understand it about your partner, you will find out that you will, you will have, you will have issues. Issues are normal. It's natural. Even my two dogs in the house, born of the same parents, we have stopped allowing two of them to stay overnight outside the cage. We will put this person this night. Next night, we will release the other one and put the other one in the cage. Because every night, these two dogs, one must be limping. And it's always the man that limps. Because he will be doing pity, 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 pity. The woman will bite the bite. bite. In fact, we came out one morning about two days ago and saw the leg of the Male dog, swollen. We knew another fight. So if they can fight from this, are you not still fighting with your siblings? How come you want to live in perfect peace with your husband? Your siblings you lived with with 30 years before you got married. Some men here 40 years before you got married. And then since the girl came into your life, you want the girl to just become an angel overnight. No. You build an angel through her life. Develop the angel. 40. Till today, you quarrel with your siblings, including your parents. And the girl came and said, you can't give me peace. You can't give me peace in this house. You can't give me peace in this house. Is your brothers giving you peace? They are not. So you need to understand that. So we stop making a mess of marriage institution. We are making a mess of marriage institution. Patience is flying away from the window. The man wants to kill the woman. The woman wants to kill the man. You do me, I'll do you. You do me, I'll do you. You do me, I'll do you. Until there is no one to do again. A man died recently and the wife was behind the, the corpse crying. Honey, get up and let's continue our quarrel. Honey, get up and let's... I said, oh, no, wake, wake him. Let's continue our quarrel. 
I prefer us to quarrel than you to die. Yo. I prefer us to... I'm saying that to say that you see this man you're troubling and this woman you're troubling. One day you will miss him or her. The earlier you begin to make way for peace, the better for you. The earlier you begin to say no, enough of this trouble. Let's, let's take another journey of peace. If a madman slaps you at the motor park, do you respond? Won't you start running? Why is it that your husband said a word to you? No more. Your wife said something to you. You want to kill her. Why would you call me big for nothing? If you're not big for nothing, what are you big for? Big for something. Eh? He said something. She said something. You're holding it. Motopaka Albero says it ten times. And he said, I can't talk to you. Can't talk to you. You are not in the same class. Who are you? You are nobody. And you are walking away. Your wife said it. You can't endure. Her head entered your listen. And her back became your pointy back. And the worst part, neighbors were knocking you. You refused to open. I will kill you here before they arrive. Taxing. I salute you. Bow down your hairs, please. I don't care which temperament are you. Just ask, ask the Holy Spirit to come into your life. Call on the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place. Holy Spirit, Thou art welcome in this place. O omnipotent Father, all our mercy and grace, O oh, Thou art welcome in this place. Holy Spirit, Thou art welcome in this place. Holy Spirit, Thou art welcome in this place. Only, omnipotent Father, Oh, have mercy and grace. Oh, thou art welcome in this place. Our Father, we thank you. We commit every man, every woman under my voice, using the cholerics as a point of contact. Cholerics, melancholy, phlegmatic, sanguine, they are all individual uniqueness. Father, we we'll ask that you strengthen our strength. Strengthen our strength. Weaken our weakness in the name of Jesus Christ. Give us the spirit of understanding, the spirit of God, the spirit of understanding, the spirit that will cause us to understand our partner, the spirit that will cause our partner to understand us, that at the end of the day, O oh God, the reason for which we instituted marriage will be made manifest. Thank you, everlasting Father. We'll give you glory and praise, for we prayed in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. If you were blessed, rejoice before the Lord and give God some praise.